Good evening and welcome to Shamavi's Spectrum, Sewing Machine Speak series. The lovely Juliet Castle from Just So has agreed to speak to me today and share her journey. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. And thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you. So where should we start? Um, well, I guess we could start at the beginning. Um, my mum was a, an amazing sewist. Um, she made her own wedding dress. She made my wedding dress and my sister's. And I still actually have them as well, um, stored, uh, not here in Dubai, but back at home. Um, and she gave me her sewing machine, which was a, a Singer electric sewing machine. I guess I had it from when I was around 10, something like that. But I'd been sitting watching her sew from when I was, yeah, so high. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, you know, I mean, I, I remember always um, wearing her the clothes that she made for me and my sister. Um, but yeah, so I had this this sewing machine when she upgraded to a more modern machine, um, and this machine had one stitch, which was straight stitch. Um, and I even actually made a, a, an evening dress on that sewing machine. Um, I can't quite remember how I would have made it. It must have taken me forever. But each uh, seam was done with a straight stitch. All the um, neatening was done by folding over and straight stitch. It was like, whew, yeah, I don't think I'd have the patience to do it now, actually. Um, I think as you develop and go through your sewing machine journey and you upgrade your machines, you kind of become less patient, maybe. So, but that uh, just shows that, uh, and this is most of the time that on our sewing machines, what we use is a straight and a zigzag. So you exactly. can do anything with it and you've just proven a point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, so that, that's where um, I started um, and just making simple dolls clothes and like little tops for myself. But I still had that machine when I had my daughter and I made clothes for her on that machine as well. Um, because she was a very, very tiny baby and I could never get anything to fit her. So, uh, and we lived in the UK at the time, so she had school uniforms and I made all her school uniforms on there. They just didn't come in small enough size for her. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's it's where it all started with a singer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just saying this yesterday in Spose, that it's not just a machine, it's a legacy. So, which is what you have uh, inherited. The emotional yes. attachment is that much um, as whatever the physical utility value of that yes. special machine. Yes, Wonderful. That's so nice to hear about you. And um, so uh, have you passed it on the skill and to your <laughs> <laughs> next gen well, I, I have, nieces, I, yeah, daughter, my, anybody? My, um, my daughter initially was like, oh, no, no. I kept trying, kept trying. It was only once she um, bought her own home and she's like, oh, mum, can you teach me to make a cushion cover? And now she's very adventurous. Um, you know, she'll go, oh, I'm going to sew myself a pair of stretch trousers. And I'm like, ooh, hang on a minute, you know. <laughs> but um, I um, inherited my mum's uh, Benina sewing machine and overlocker when she became too um, poorly to sew anymore. Um, so I passed my more modern sewing machine, not the Singer, right? that went years ago, but I passed my more modern ones and my overlocker onto her. And there's no stopping her now. She just, well, the, the only thing stopping her is her little ones. But yeah, she makes stuff for those them too. So There's something so beautiful about having something tangible in your hands, which you have made. And I think all women should pursue some hobby which gives them something tangible at the end of the day, knitting, crochet, anything. And, Absolutely. Um, and sewing is definitely uh, on top of the list for saving money as well as for uh, getting, you know, your st uh, instant gratification. Kind yes. Of thing. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about your work and how did your passion become your profession? Um, I think uh, when um, I moved to Dubai uh, nearly two and a half years ago now, um, yeah, I, I was kind of still finding my feet here. And I mentioned to a few people that um, I could sew and they're like, oh, you know, you should sort of think about making a business for that. And I'm, mm, well, I don't know. I don't know. And then lockdown happened and I was um, I was making something for my um, grandson, actually. It was an elephant that I had a pattern for. And I'd been playing with an embroidery machine, actually. And I'd embroidered his name just as a trial on a piece of fabric. And I thought, hmm, I could use this as part of the elephant. And then I... 
after I finished making this elephant, I realized I've really enjoyed doing this. So I, um, I thought I'd try and just see what people thought. So I talked to a few uh, of my husband's colleagues, actually, they had smaller children. And I said, you know, is this the sort of thing that you would want, you know, using saved clothes from your babe from when your children were babies? Is it something that you would want? Um, so you've got something tangible that you can actually look at rather than just having a, a sleep suit put in a drawer or a little dress put in a drawer that you've actually got something on the side that that, gives, that celebrates their birthday and, uh, and and that sort of thing. So that's that's where it all started. And they were all like, oh, yeah, that was, sounds great. They've not come through with it just yet. But <laughs> <laughs> we live in hope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, so uh, let me just quickly, uh, I'll just uh, share the pictures of some which you shared with me and I wish you'd shared more and I wish I had time to kind of uh, put them together. But let's just quickly give us a, a minute. And um, so I have here. Yes. So this is one. And this is something more. And this is here. Yes. So do you want to talk about any of them? Um, well, the, the monkey in particular, that's um, that's a special one for my granddaughter. She is a little monkey, which is why she got the monkey. Um, for, that's her memory animal made out of her first baby clothes. Um, the snowflake, actually, that's a crochet snowflake because crochet is another hobby. I tend to sit in the evening, watch a bit of TV and crochet while I'm doing it. It keeps my hands busy, stops me eating. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that was, I, I made some of those for um, the ladies at the golf club here. I, th another passion is golf. So I made those for the staff at the golf club. Um, just as a little thank you for all their hard work. So that was a Christmas present for them this year. Um, and the other one that uh, was some prizes that I made for a little golf competition that I was involved in. Um, I just embroidered a, a cartoon lady golfer and you know, we, I love to golf on it. And they were absolutely made up with the prize. They, they, it was like, oh, wow, well, you know, this is great. So I was really pleased that I'd actually taken the time to do something special for them. So, yeah. That's, that's great. So um, um, I, uh, two things. One is I'll ask you about what are the machines that you're using and if you could share some more information about the machines that you have. And then mm -hmm. we could talk about, uh, you could show some of the stuff that you have. So which do you want to do first? Uh, the machines, I think. Okay, go ahead. Um, okay, so um, back in um, the Netherlands, which is where I um, live, although I'm not Dutch, that's where we, we lived before we came here, I have um, a Husqvarna, um, which was the one I actually replaced the Singer with. My mum encouraged me to get rid of the Singer and replace it with a modern sewing machine. And I love that Husqvarna. Yes. It's a superb sewing machine. Um, and it cost a lot of money when I bought it, I think 25 years ago, but it still runs as good as new. It's, it's a wonderful machine. And then I have a Juki there as well, um, which I, I like the machine, but my daughter prefers that to the Husqvarna, so she uses the Juki. Um, the, the industrial and, one? No, 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 no. It's a home. It's a home home machine. But um, it's it's a, it's a nice enough machine. But I, yeah. for me, the Husqvarna gives a much better finish. Yeah. Um, I was partial to the Husqvarna myself, except that I didn't get around to it because I heard that there isn't much support here uh, in the market. So I went ahead with the brother. Not that I regret that. But yes, um, Husqvarna was, it looked so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and as I say, it, it just... 25 years old it still runs that's a life that's a life <laughs> as good as the day it was i bought it. it it's beautiful and in the netherlands we do have the support for it as well so that's why i left it there i just figured it was better there yeah. um so and then i also as i said earlier i inherited my mum's um benina she had a 380 mm -hmm. um which is kind of, yeah, because it was my mum's it it kind of I'm attached to it, emotionally attached to it as well. Um, bird, I wanted, and I, well, I'd also I'd um, acquired a brother uh, sewing machine that had an embroidery module on it, mm -hmm. and I suddenly, you know, that this is how I got into the embroidery because mm -hmm. I was thinking, oh, this is really good fun. I love creating the designs and and doing all different things. Um, but 
I found that the, the brother with the embroidery module was limited. So um, I then uh, had a chat with um, Aish at Classic, Classic Quilts and I upgraded uh, to the Benina 590. Sorry, just checking the number there. <laughs> I couldn't remember for a second. Um, the, the, one, the one with the embroidery module as well. So it's expanded my embroidery capabilities as well. So um, the intention was to sell my mum's Benina, but I just can't bring myself to do it at the moment so I think I'll keep that one and probably take it back home and sell either the Juki or the Husvana. probably the Juki. <laughs> so with, with all the sewing stuff we have I'm sure we need half a container for that itself um, well, <laughs> and, have I hus- just, and have I just said that publicly oh god. <laughs> my, well when we moved over here my husband swears half the container was my sewing stuff I, I disagree I think it was only a third but uh, <laughs> Um, so as well as the sewing machine sorry I also have um, a Bonina overlocker and I have a Janome cover lock which I have a love-hate relationship with so (laughs) yeah okay Uh, about the embroidery part uh, do you purchase designs or do you digitize also I purchase I'm not I'm so new to it I haven't um, sort of got into the digitizing I'd like to because people are saying to me oh can you embroider this you know this particular logo and I'm like if I can buy it yes I can do it but I I don't do my own digitizing I could um, of course ask them at Classic Quilts to do that for me because that is a service they offer so um, maybe that's something I'll think about down the line but not right now so no, it needs a lot of patience and it needs a little different type of uh, mindset to actually be able to digitize. And then when you have experts, one is like, okay, let them do, <laughs> do what yeah. they are good at and let's exactly. do what and, we are good at. And I just want to create. That's, that's, <laughs> I, I just love creating things. And I actually like creating things for other people. Although I do things for myself, I do, I do make my own clothes. Um, for me, I love creating for somebody else and giving it to them and seeing the joy on their face and the pleasure on their face when they actually receive something that's has been thought about and handmade. That's that for me is the yeah. Right. That's so, it. so most of it it is uh, related to baby clothes. And uh, uh, do you sew clothes for uh, people? Do you sew as well? Um, no, I don't. I, I'm not um, not into tailoring and that sort of thing. I mean, if somebody said, oh, could you make me this skirt? Yes, I could do that. But it's not something I'm really, I, I'd rather make baby clothes, actually, because I think they're way cuter. So you do make baby clothes? You do? Baby clothes, uh, I do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole hamper kind of a thing, you do offer those services, um, is it? I could do. I could do, yes. It's not something <laughs> I've thought about, but yes, absolutely, I could do. Well, my second name is Idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Juliet, uh, Juliet, I would like you to please share what you've made. And so I'm going to disappear from the screen and I'm going to put you on main screen. So please okay. go ahead and share what you have been making, right? Okay. So um, I have here um, a little romper. Um, I took a basic pattern from the internet, free pattern, and I changed it um, to make it my own design. Uh, and actually make it a lot easier to sew as well. And I also um, converted it into a little shorts pattern, little dungle nice. shorts pattern. So they're, they're really cute. They're just waiting for a baby to be born now because my grandchildren <laughs> are a bit old for that. Um, and then um, this is um, one of the little soft animals I made. It's a little piggy. Okay. Um, the story behind this one is um, my mum also used to spin um, her own uh, wool and um, knit and weave and that sort of thing um, and this is one of the jumpers that she made I guess probably back in the 1980s um, and she, this is a jumper that she absolutely loved you can see it was all embroidered with uh, like flowers and, and what have you it's, it's um, so cute and so cuddly yeah, actually <laughs> it is it's very soft and cuddly um, and when my mum passed away I did actually keep um, several of her handmade hands uh, spun handmade jumpers to make memory items for my sister, uh, my daughter and myself uh, from. And this is the one that I have. It's a little piggy. He's very cute. I, I love him to bits. He sits on my bedside table. So I look at my mum and remember her every time. And then um, here I have a, 
a little uh, Scotty dog. I'll try and figure out the camera. The yeah. little Scotty dog I made um, for my husband. Um, I actually made it out of his old shirts. And when I gave it to him, he went, they look like my shirts. <laughs> I wondered where they'd gone. So, yeah, so that's, uh, I'm very much into reuse, recycle, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then here, this is actually what I've been busy with today, making, um, it's a sample uh, bear. Um to put into he's a little too baby cute. Shop. He yeah, is. He's actually, this cute. is the medium sized bear. I made um, two of them for some twins that were born very prematurely. And the pet, they, I made the large size, which sounds sort of huge. They're 16 inches tall, I think, when they sit down, wow. bigger than the babies themselves. So this one's just um, those are sampled to go into a little baby store um, that's local to me. Um, so just see if I can get a little bit of business from there. So that's all I've got at the moment. I have everything else I tend to give away. So I, I know we hardly uh, keep inventory. It's it's uh, it's it's good news that you don't you don't yeah. keep things. But then to show samples, it's always a tough uh, it call. Is, yeah. So I'm just seeing that all the sewing, like the bear or uh, you know the toys which you make, it needs a little bit more fine attention than what normally one would do because it's visible. The the seams are very visible. Yes. So do you have a set time or a set? Uh, process you go through for creating these how do you I mean what does your work schedule look like um uh I fitted in around whatever else I'm doing I mean like today I actually had it was a bonus day for me today I was supposed to be busy this morning which got cancelled at the last minute so I'm like yes I can get in my sewing room <laughs> um I play golf a few times a week so I kind of fit it in around that and household chores and things like that. So I don't have a particular, I work on these days. I'm, I'm not that disciplined, I'm afraid. So one of the purpose of this series was also to encourage people to experiment with their machine or, you know, those who are looking at purchasing new machines, newbies maybe. What kind of advice or suggestion would you like to give them? Um, I would say buy the best machine you can afford but don't go for some something that's all singing all, all dancing until you're absolutely sure that you're going to use it I mean the Benina that I have does everything and most most people wouldn't use most of what's on there so but you know things like a brother machine I actually have a brother machine that I used to teach on um, and my embroidery machine was a brother my first embroidery machine was a brother um, and they are amazing machines they do everything you need them to do and they are a very reasonable price and I would say for most people that sort of machine um, is, is is good enough so yeah that's... so I heard I heard the word teach now and earlier as well so what kind of things do you teach and who are the people who are learning from you? Um, well, I had a, um, a short session with Maria, but um, I found that teaching groups, large groups, is not really my kind of thing. I always enjoyed it if there was maybe somebody that was struggling a little and I could give them individual attention. So for me, I think I'm a one-on-one -on -one kind of tutor. Um, I, I've done a couple of um, like beginner sewing lessons, making a tote bag, that sort of thing. Um, and I've really enjoyed it just with one or two people. It, it's, it's really good and you, it, because you can, you can give them the attention they need if, if they're struggling a little with it. So that's, that's what I like to teach. Just, just basic sewing. I'm not, um, I'm not going to teach them how to make a jacket or a coat or anything. I'm not, that's not me. <laughs> So I can't resist asking this question. Are you a perfectionist or do you just prefer to bring it? Um, I'm a little bit of both, actually. Um, I like to do it right, but I also will hold something at arm's length and go, can you see a mistake? It, I always think a mistake actually is never a mistake. It's a design element. That's how I call it. Um, and if actually you hold it at arm's length and you can't see it, then nobody else is going to be able to see it. So I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle. My mum was an absolute perfectionist. She would, um, she would do things five, six, seven times until it was absolutely perfect. I, I haven't got the patience for that. I will adjust things to make it look nice. That's, that's where I so, am. So two questions. One is, uh, do you have any favourite fabric haunts? And what is your favourite fabric to work with? Um, I'll have to say my favourite fabric haunt is classic quilts because I do like the quality there. You you always get good quality and they've got a huge selection. Um, 
my favourite fabric, yeah, it's cotton. But I do like working with a nice jersey. I do like that, making baby clothes. But I tend to use the European jerseys. I think they're much better quality than what is available here in uh, the UAE. So, or that I've been able to find anyway. So, yeah. Yes. So I think we've had quite a lot of information about the fabric laces and stuff on um, in the group as such. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure people will be able to find and I'm glad uh, that you shared your journey and your experience. Is there something, some message which you want to give to anybody who's out there sewing or on their journey or something, some tip that you want to share with and say, watch out for this and this could be your um, savior kind of a thing? Okay, well, the first thing I will say is that I've always found um, any sort of handicraft, be it sewing, crochet, I, for some reason I can't knit, I've never been able to, so I don't do that. But any sort of sewing, embroidery, hand embroidery, crochet, I find it really good for my mental health. If I'm finding myself getting a little bit low, I'll pick up my crochet or come into my sewing room and it always lifts me. Um, tips and tricks, I guess. The biggest one, well, there's two actually. One is never look at the needle. Don't look at the needle going up and down because your sewing will go all off over the place. Look at your guideline, pick a point on your machine to put the edge of your fabric against and watch that. Don't worry about the needle, it'll do what it's gonna do. And the other one is hold the bobbin and the uh, top thread for the first few stitches when you start sewing to avoid a bird's nest underneath. That's my trick, tips and tricks. <laughs> That That is very valid. And yes, uh, about the needle as well as holding the thread, very valid ones. And I hope whoever is listening to this benefits. And if they are not following the same, let them start doing it from today yep, <laughs> or absolutely. from when they're here. So thank you so much, uh, Juliet, for being here. Please hold on. Don't go away. I'll just say bye to you here now. Okay. But we'll just catch up in a few. Okay, thank you.